reached the 31st day of August 2023, and I'm your host, um, Dana Durmford. I hope you're doing well on this Thursday evening. And you can find my videos under videos at Nuclear for Dummies instead of under live streams because it looks like they got a new hack that stops you from live streaming without going through YouTube itself. I'm assuming us lobbyists at YouTube can do that. And we can quantify those assertions because I reformatted one of my computers and I was still blocked uh, from live streaming, which meant it can't be on my system. It has to be at YouTube itself or they're intercepting my internet, which Nothing surprises anybody anymore with how evil the nuclear industry actually is. We must be winning if they're willing to do ridiculous stuff like that. If you're familiar with Fukushima, and we'll just run you through it. Japan had multiple reactors, not like Chernobyl with a single reactor. There was graphite. These were pure uranium, pure plutonium. At the very top of the buildings was decades of reactor cores. Their buildings are actually gone. And if you take two of these reactors, reactor three and four, stack them on top of each other, they're not as tall as the bottom part of the frame, which the bottom part is right there. And that's the frame for these reactors, for number one in particular, where they put this Kevlar sarcophagus around it. And so when you look at it, Look how big it actually is. They're 150 feet wide and 190 feet tall. And there's four levels. That's the four first one. And so they, they deceived you on purpose. The fuel pools would have been at the top of the buildings. Chernobyl didn't have fuel pools. And these are four decades old. So you had up to around 12 reactor cores in each building because you don't have a repository anywhere worldwide. The buildings melted down. This is one of the many, many, many depictions, models, and documentation of the radioactive followed. In this one, you're looking at a radioactive plume that covered the planet in 20 days. And most of the models agree with that. They faked reactor 3 and they faked reactor 4 in order to manipulate you to think that they got the fuel out of the pool. Uh, don't. Don't be naive, don't be gullible. Uh, this model is based on 19.5 days from the Norwegian Institute of Air Research. Remember, radiation, think of a snowstorm that covers the whole planet and never melts. And each snowflake pulses energy at the speed of light every second forever. And if you see anybody tell you it's like a banana walking in sunshine, flying on an airplane, they're, a mon they're actual monsters. If you say it's like sleeping next to somebody or climbing a mountain that's an actual monster and they've been doing that narrative for 80 years japan prime minister tells fishery minister to apologize for calling fukushima wastewater contaminated so they're pretending that that never happened that's they're pretending that that doesn't exist in order to quantify that kind of an assertion. Uh, here you see the most revolting display of arrogance and hubris, where the government is e eating f seafood, and by proxy now, because they're gods apparently, that doesn't exist anymore. That's what they're doing to you. So Kishida, which is the current prime minister of Japan, and a despicable one, not as bad as Shinzo Abe, but he, he ate the bullet, so we don't have to worry about that piece of work no more. Fisheries minister was heard calling to treat it, and you can't treat the radioactive water. And the reason you can't treat it is because you're talking about putting particulates in, um, in barrels, and um, sorry, big... Um, big tanks, and also filters. This stuff, if it comes in contact with each other, 
uh, because uh, like the neutrons and gammas, alphas, and betas, you end up with a chain reaction. So you can't actually filter this stuff because it's fuel particles we're talking about. So they're pouring water over the reactor core, claiming nothing got out. And so that's not the real story. And the real story, you need, you need to learn it, and you need to worry about it, and you need to, to hold this industry, particularly the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is completely out of control. They're, they're completely dishonest, 100% corrupt. There's not a, single, not a single person there that is honest, or even close to being honest, or even know what honesty is, I believe. Fisher's minister was heard calling to treat, and you can't treat the, the Riva water filtration system, which was France's, the same as the Alps didn't work. The Alps system in 2014 hadn't worked, and the reason is because you can't contain this stuff. If you put it in a filter, you can't get in the buildings anymore. If you fill up the tank, you can't build another tank on the site. We're actually talking about reactor cores. We're not talking about marshmallows or, or cornflakes. We're talking about nuclear meltdowns, and the world needs to hold these people accountable when they try to manipulate you. He later apologized. The fish minister retracted the comment, but only because he was forced to and, and publicly humiliated to do so and said he would not resign. So why should he resign over telling the truth? Anybody familiar with that? Anybody know anything about that? Is there anybody? Let's keep rolling here. So he's not going to resign, he's not, but he did apologize and, and so-called retract his comments. So why didn't the media say, wait a second, you know, it's not treated. You can't treat water from nuclear meltdowns because your media is the same. They're completely compromised. There is no such thing as a journalist. And it's been quite a few years since one actually existed. Yeah, they got the actual credentials of a journalist, but they don't actually do any journalism. The Alps treated water, and I'll show you that coming up in a second, actually, from the contaminated water held in tanks. So to hear the claim, and there are two different types of water, and we've heard this narrative. So they told so many narratives, you can't keep it straight anymore. I've been following it, and I can, and I do, and I will. ELP stand for the alleged ELP Advanced Liquid Processing System. Um, so if this actually worked, everybody worldwide would be using the system. You know how many people's using it worldwide? Nobody. Just a corporation named TEPCO that has a lot to lose and a lot to gain by you believe in the lie. I've instructed the minister to apologize as well as retract what he said, the prime minister of the country. So that doesn't mean it's voluntarily. It means you were instructed by your boss to manipulate the population. The fisheries agency test of fish found no detectable levels of tritium. And the problem with the story was that you can't find the tritium signature because it's sat everything is saturated plutonium, uranium, you know, stuff from nuclear meltdowns, and americium, neptunium. These are so raw, so harsh emitters, there's no way to find a single from a weak beta like tritium, you can't differentiate it. You can't separate it. So imagine taking 200 million atoms, 200 million, and you're going to separate a million. Now, 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, you can't say it. You can't see it. But what they're claiming with their narrative is they can separate tritium and cesium and uranium and plutonium and everything else. You can't separate the atoms. They're all the exact same size. And the only way you can separate, you can't separate it. You can just put it all in one containment. You can't actually filter that. And I'll show you that coming up. In South Korea, the president also ate fish for lunch. So South Korea done the same thing where they're out eating fish and that somehow quantifies or um, or removes the fact that the reactors melted down. They've, they've done some serious public relations firms to get you to look elsewhere. This is one of the many hoodwinks they pulled against the population of the planet. 
where you have four reactors or four different major medias pretending they're in a building that don't exist, which to your left is reactor four. Reactor four doesn't exist. So what they done was they put this bizarre uh, contraption they built off site and used a bunch of homeless people to assemble it and remote control cranes. But it's, it doesn't physically touch the remains of reactor four. They put that there and then they claimed in 2013 they were actually in the building itself. It's, you can't store the, the thousand tanks. So in 2013, they had a thousand tanks. In 2023, they have a thousand tanks. In 2014, they have 1,200 tanks. In 2017, they got 900 tanks. In 2000, and 19, they got 1,000 tanks, the, that line right here at the beginning. In 2021, they got 1,000 tanks. 2023, again, Mary Yamaguchi, I don't know if you noticed that, they got 1,000 tanks in that line on the 24, up to the beginning by the reactor course. Uh, so if they were actually putting the radioactive water that they're pouring over the reactor core, this is water they're pumping in and it's going to mix, they said, with the water from the tanks. This is, this is what that's all about. That's located over by reactor 5 and 6, which is a building they very rarely show, and it's in Futabar. And Futabar has been abandoned for 12 years, but the only thing that's coming out of the nuclear meltdown is tritium, they claimed, Yet these communities on both sides are still abandoned. You're, like you're at a nuclear meltdown if you're homeless, because nuclear scientists don't go there. Again, claiming it's in a thousand tanks, as I showed you, they had a thousand tanks in 2013. Radioactive tritium in the ocean of Japan releases the treated water. Well, it's not treated. You can't treat. The buildings don't even exist anymore. Right? Like their whole narrative is predicated upon you not knowing that. They're not going to show you that picture in the stories. They're not going to show you. And the only picture they do show you, and this is unusual to show you any picture, happened to be this picture right here. And this was a refinery, chemical refinery, that had 1,500 tons of uranium that caught fire at the tsunami, of depleted uranium. We, know, we call them dirty bombs in reality. That's what they're working on there. Something most people probably never heard tell of. So they took those buildings and they left. They should have tore it all down. There's nothing there, right? Look at it. There's nothing left there. They should have tore it all down. They didn't because they needed something to put these fake covers over so that then they can pretend like to the left, they're in the building to the right, 100 feet above it. And, and like this is... You know, this is the first movement we had on this subject in quite a few years, and it's big news in Asia. They're trying to convince the Asians community that the only 2.2 grams is all got out of buildings that had around 10 million pounds in them each and lost the entire inventories. So the tanks, 2014, the Arriva system, has yet to function reliably. It has yet to function. In 2014, uh, five months later, the Arriva system, which is the same as the ELP system, hadn't, still hadn't been used the same as the ELP system. The groundwater bypass operation, billion dollars, didn't work. The, the fence that they were going to build for a billion dollars didn't get built and didn't work because you can't stop radiation that way. The alleged ice wall, rather than a real wall, didn't work. And how could it? There's no bottom, there's no top. Again, you know, every time you have a snow, for all the snow gets in there, it has to melt, and also all the rain from the typhoons gets in there, right? The series system in 2013 didn't work. We never heard about it after, which was supposed to separate CC-137. Again, if you've got 200 million atoms and a hit of a needle and you can't see it, how do you separate cesium-137 from uranium when they're both the same size? It's ludicrous to suggest you can. And they're the only ones that are doing that. 
at multiple nuclear meltdowns. The plant has already released enormous amounts of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean from a plethora of leaks. Leaks. So, like calling the destroyed, missing buildings leaks is unbelievable dishonest. EU Energy Commissioner called Fukushima an apocalypse. Everything is out of control. Uh, France acknowledged Japan has lost control and the French will leave the countries. If Swiss told everybody to get out. Tugs lost all control, said energy commissioners. Nuclear report warned on TV of an apocalyptic scenario could one day be considered to start the ultimate catastrophe of the world and the entire planet. And that is with merit. I'll explain that to you. We launched research expeditions year after year from one end of British, from British Columbia to the other end right out of Alaska. And we've done that for six years. We went out and researched the species, and the species are missing. The species are actually missing due to endless perpetual radioactive fallout. And so the species to your left are actually exterminated, and it's time, to, it's okay to fight back. It's okay, because you'll never take that picture again. You'll never take this picture again. Right? The before and after pictures are very clear. The radioactive fallout, and this is in the bottom right-hand corner, 20 days, has sealed the Earth's fate. And so now you have to fight for your life, for your children's future, and for the future of all the species. Because there's a lot of entities out there, and all the major media, all the universities, all the government agencies, all the academics, all the professors, all the scientists have came out and promoted the false story rather than the real one. So what does that tell you about us as a society? What does that tell you about the horror that we're facing? And, and I can guarantee you, after six years of doing research expeditions, for four to five months at a time without coming home, and being physically attacked, been shot at, have been demonized by over a thousand media, has been harassed and stalked and dosed. They put my address, pictures of my vehicles and home online to get people and royal people up to get them to target me. I've never wavered. I never wavered from the truth. I've always provided the documentation to back up any of my assertions. I'll show you some more before and after pictures because you really truly are in serious trouble and you are that generation. This is your watch. This is your responsibility. You're obligated. This is your obligation. This is your opportunity to make the world or give the world hope, give the world an opportunity to have a future. Because without your voices, without, without your attention, we have no future. I'm just educating the population, and it's a difficult as hell. And doing research expeditions is difficult work. And it wouldn't be so much if we had the support. And we're very fortunate to have any support. And there's just a couple of people supporting me. And... I've still got an incredible amount of documentation from just a little bit of support. But by reality, I should have 10 people out there doing research and getting them to call in or send in videos and do my shows to do the presentations of the reality. And they have done everything they can to destroy me. And I can't even do a live streams on Rumble or Fukushima, not because, or YouTube, not because they banned me, but because the industry is hacked has the ability to hack uh, these platforms and stop me from doing those streams, which I've been doing for over a decade. And that, that code, so I did. <coughs> that coincided, I apologize, I had a volume a bit left. That coincided with the dumping, the alleged dumping in the ocean. That's not actually going on. Listen, they've been growing food in the nuclear wasteland alongside of one ton bags of radiation for 12 years. They had 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. Not everybody got health care. Cancer is just one of 1,800 diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries that will manifest.
the buildings are actually gone. And so originally, it was very easy to count, to understand the buildings are gone. This, this is not rocket scientist uh, work. Anybody can look at it and quantify the assertions the buildings are permanently, irreparably destroyed. And because there's nuclear meltdowns, but there's a lot of people who buy into the propaganda. This is one of very many. She's got a campaign. She got a campaign to called Dear Greenpeace Campaign, where they asked Greenpeace to give up opposing nuclear. But because all she is is probably super nice people, but she's just a useful idiot who doesn't understand the reality of what she's promoting. Kushida does. Eats the safe. And think about that as a headline, safe and delicious Fukushima fish. So a lot of people will just buy into it. They won't read the story. They'll look, oh, honey, everything's actually safe. I've seen it in the media. Yeah, but the husband will say, well, I was watching Dana Durnford, or I was watching so-and-so. But, um, no, no, it was, he's not on TV. Sure, he's just some idiot out there in the Internet. You've got to trust TV. You've got to trust, trust to science, and you are in real trouble. And we've seen many, many depictions of them and this is the lowest form of life, to pretend that eating seafood quantifies and mitigates multiple nuclear meltdowns. But for some people, that actually works. So a prime example was Boris Johnson, just before he got removed in, as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the, the current... <coughs> he doesn't even know what kind of juice. He's just promoting Fukushima. But listen carefully to the people in the background. It's very sinister stuff, the way they laugh and talk. But what he does is revolting. And he's doing the same thing where he claims drinking a little tiny itty bitty, uh, a tenth of a spoonful now makes it safe. <laughs> Fantastic, delicious. Is this peach juice or what? Yes, it, or it is. Nectar, nectar. Okay. nectar. This is the little, cheers everybody. Okay. Cheers everybody in Fukushima. Delicious. Yum. <laughs> Very. And you heard the, the Jap in the background? F yeah. Fukushima. Delicious nectar. So Prime Minister ate what he calls safe and delicious. So if there's a journalist, he's just not going to regurgitate that narrative. You're going to say, wait a second, you're talking about multiple nuclear meltdowns. You're trying to force people, you're trying to trick people into eating deadly food, sir. By the way, 700, uh, 1,000 tanks is actually 750. If you include a bunch of small ones, hundreds and hundreds of small ones. And if you take water and pour it over the meltdown, and the numbers they're talking about, the numbers they're actually talking about, is the equivalent of splitting a garden hose four way and spraying it on the reactors, you know, four ways. So split a garden hose, a three eight inch garden hose, four ways and spray it on 9,000 degree Fahrenheit nuclear meltdowns deep in the earth underneath or whatever's left there. Because a lot of it was evaporated, atomized and aerosol into the environment, but a chain reaction is a perpetual disease factories. These sites, all nuclear power plants, by the way, are disease factories. Because the fuel pool is still splitting the atoms. The, fuel, the, the reactor cores and the fuel pools have no containment. They're still splitting the same atoms as you would for a million homes. And that's why they're surrounded by farms. It's time to drop nuclear on its head every chance you get. Japan has demanded that China drop its ban on seafood imports. And also warning will complain to the World Trade Organization which is the United Nations, which is, has no sovereignty over anybody's country. But take it a bit of arrogance. China could curb stomp Japan in a heartbeat. Demanded that China remove, and what they're saying is, well, China's releasing tritium from the reactors. And so saying tritium and suggesting that that's what's coming out of a nuclear meltdown is tritium, these people should lose their degrees. They should be barred from ever being in a position of authorities. Fukushima water, wastewater release royals China-Japan's relation. 
China opposes and strongly condemns it. Look, China knows the buildings look like that. China knows the buildings look like that. China knows the tanks are empty. China is not delusional. China knows the reactors are gone. That's only two of them, by the way. There's four of them, eight fuel pools that are missing. And so... Japan has no plan to boost funds to ease the reputation damage for Fukushima water release. No plans to boost funds to ease reputational reputations damage. Uh, the, 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 you know, they're so disconnected, they're so incapable of, of admitting, they, they never show you these pictures. Because then their stories no longer work. But this is deadly, this is not a game. You need to get educated and you need to speak out. You, it's your responsibility. Who else is going to do it if you don't do it? If you can't do it, find somebody that can do it and get them to do it. It doesn't, and I provide you with an endless arsenal, an endless arsenal. You don't have to do a two-hour video. You, you just got to do a 30-second or one-minute video that's articulated. Just pick one of the topics and say, look, you know, why are they talking about tritium when the reactor cores and the fuel pools are gone? And the fact that it's another person, another voice, you're the most powerful thing on the planet is your voice and telling the truth. It, it doesn't matter your race or your religion or your ideology or your color or anything else. It matters, your words matter. Your words are, you know, that everybody can leave a legacy just by being honest. Everybody can change the world just by being honest. You don't, you don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be an academic. You don't have to be a scientist. You just got to be honest. Japan's prime minister eats safe and delicious Fukushima fish. Again, that's his words, see? And so they, they put that in the headline as if they paid scientists to test it or something. Media, and that's from AFP, major media. It's, the, it's truly one of the most dishonest and one of the most cowardly things to do is what he's doing right now. He's pretending because he's popular that somehow eating fish mitigates the fact that the buildings are actually gone. And that radioactive fallout is lethal to everything with replicating cells. Yung dines on seafood. Fukushima discharge devoid of South Korea. Devoids so Korea. So again, here's the prime minister. He's the president of Japan. They're the same as the prime minister, right? But what he's doing is using these positions to influence people to do something that is against science. Everything they're doing is the opposite of what the science says they should do. And so they've manipulated science to say that doesn't exist. But but it does exist. And just because they lie to you. And because they're in positions of authority, don't mean they're good people, and don't mean that they're right. Uh, unfortunately, it means the opposite. And her horrifyingly, it means the opposite. The president looks to manage backlash from water release and keep dente with Japan, keep in step with Japan. Again, if you're not going to put your people first, then you're a traitor. That's that's a traitor. And every step of the way, he was a former prosecutor. First thing he'd done when he got elected was got his picture taken at a nuclear power plant with the crew. Not, not at Fukushima, because you can't promote Fukushima. Not, not where the people, like 85% of Japan has spoken out vehemently against Fukushima and nuclear. So here's a president of the country promoting nuclear in a country that vehemently disavows nuclear the, and so you got millions hundreds of millions of people have no power because this single person makes that decision and his job is to promote nuclear not promote health and not promote future and we're seeing that symmetric throughout all countries the exact replica of that and that's that's not a slippery slope that's a fucking dead fall Fukushima wastewater release on mainland China, Hong Kong got it wrong. 
So the incredible arrogance to even put that in the headline. And it, it honesty doesn't count. The honesty doesn't matter for these people. They have no intention, zero intentions of being around. Seafood bans are based on unscientific fear over the safety of the treated water. Well, meanwhile, they don't show you any one of these pictures of the multi react to quantify their assertion because now you realize they're actually monsters. And um, that's bullying, that kind of statement, is meant to turn you against the truth. It's meant to make you doubt any other narrative. And if you're vulnerable to the media and you've been dragged into it for decades, you probably can't tell the difference. So here they are pretending that tritium, they're showing a little green, they're showing two of them pointing at each other. First off, China doesn't have multiple nuclear reactors melted down. Japan does. You, you can't, and like this is Western media. Uh, unfortunately, CNN we know is scum. She's pretending she's 110 feet above the wreckage that should have been removed to her left. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011, leading to the country's worst nuclear disaster. Again, she's not in Reactor 4. And so why take that kind of a chance? Why did the world's media take that kind of a chance? By the way, give us a like, consider subscribe, and you click that notification. I don't know if it works anymore. I don't know if it ever worked on my site. So we're trying to get back up after they banned us from live streaming, not through YouTube, but through a, a government hack, a government computer specialist that has just hacked the system and denies me the ability to do a live stream so now I have to shoot the video and then post it online. So they're not winning by doing it, but they're inconveniencing everybody that's familiar with this. Japan's Prime Minister eats Fukushima seafood with ministers to dispel concern. Well eating food doesn't get away get away from the fact that the buildings are destroyed. But that's what they're claiming. Reputational damage, like no scientists work there. The ground, the China syndrome from reactor one and two, uh, what you're looking to the right is many, many times the normal speed. There's six places where the earth is split wide open and the steam coming out of the ground is lethal doses of 10 sieverts per hour. And in this case right here, they actually had to abandon the site because if you were anywhere in that steam, that's an instant death. It coats everything with an instant death. That's why no nuclear scientists go there. That's why there's no nuclear academics working there. That's why there's no nuclear engineers working there. That's why there's no nuclear universities there. And that's why they're telling you tritium instead of the actual hideous reality of what's going on. And that's why I'm here in desperation. I'm the only person on the planet and it breaks my heart every time he says it's running educational program, desperation to educate the population. And I'm doing the research expeditions on the ocean too. And what we clearly show is an extinction event. And so the industry has turned against you and you need to reciprocate. It's the International Atomic Energy said the water release method aligns with global safety standards. There is no safety standards for radiation. The, the, it's a global betrayal standards, but there's no safety standards. There's, there's no safe level of anthropogenic man-made radiation. It's been such a struggle to get these streams back up online after the incredible disruption by the hack last uh, Friday. And they've done the same hack for Rumble. I can't, you know, if I stream on Rumble, the stream breaks after 18 minutes exactly. And I've done it repeatedly uh, on f uh, Friday and Saturday, and uh, that's what happened. And we tried it again on Sunday, and it happened again, 18 minutes in. And it breaks all the way through. I've been doing this for over a decade. It's not like I don't know what I'm doing. 
they killed one of my hard drives and I replaced that hard drive today. And I had a lot of learning to do yesterday. It took nine hours to get a 50 minute video up yesterday. And I had a big problem with the other hard drive. So I went and got a new hard drive. We lost one of our main hard drives on Friday. They hacked it. Um, and so I'm under siege, but there's nobody else doing educational programs. So I'm, I got no options but to figure out how to get back online and get this information out there and get those who are honest with themselves up to speed so they can make informed decisions based on facts instead of lies and disinformation and deceit and dishonesty. So Korea begins intensive radioactive tests in the salt fields over Fukushima concerns. So Korea has launched intensive radiation on salt fields, salt fields. And so the show tonight is only going to be a short show. And the idea was to get a regular show up at 10 p.m. And we're going to do what they call a premiere show, where I have a chat room. I'll be in the chat room or, or, or listening and have a poll again, right? Because these polls are that you're going to see alongside the videos, these are uh, master classes and they're incontestable, undeniable. And you'll see the consensus in the poll at the end of the shows. Commissioned by the governor, private institutions begin inspecting radio radiation levels of all the countries. 687 smaller size farms, salt farms, on Tuesday. And he said he didn't find, uh, in order to dispel safety woes, think of it as a statement. So you see that picture, but you don't see that picture. Because the minute you see that picture, then their stories don't have any weight or anymore, and you realize they're actually monsters. Anybody who mentions tritium is an actual monster. The minute you don't include the thousand fission products for nuclear meltdown, is the is the end of the road for you in common sense. Like all you got to do is be honest. That's all you got to do, and then you know they're lawyers. But if you look at that and say, "Well, yeah, no, there's." That's perfectly fine. Only 2.2 .2 grams got out. Don't worry, it's in a thousand tanks. Is the day that you stop looking in a mirror. Fukushima wastewater is not toxic, said Ralphie Grossi, the current idiot at the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is just a corporation. I can call myself the International Atomic Energy Agency. I'm just, it's just a corporation. And their job is to promote the law, promote the industry, promote the diseases. The tritium, see? So he's the International Atomic Energy Agency, the chief, the, the director general, is pushing the tritium narrative instead of the actual nuclear meltdown. They need to be removed from your countries. They need to be removed from any influence in your decision makings. The International Atomic Energy Agency is not who they claim they are. They're, they're not an international, they're an international mass genocide machine. They're an international uh, murder machine. Korea begins intensive radiation tests 12 years after. Well, no, because they didn't count the first 12 years. You know, why not count, why wouldn't you count the first 12 years of nuclear meltdowns? And by the way, that never goes away. That's, that's forever. Uh, Nogaya mayor to skip the Asian Games closing ceremony, ceremony over Nanjing Massacre denial. And the, the, the Nanjing Massacre was hideous. Over 300,000 people, civilians, uh, were assassinated publicly in the most hideous, in the most vulgar, and, vulgar, and they raped hundreds of thousands of women and children, the Japanese. And they're children are in charge currently see they're running governments they're running nuclear industries so korea government is going to change the term contaminated water to treated water in south korea 
Japan calls it treated water. The government has been using the term in South Korea's contaminated water. And the head of the fishery, National Federation of Fisheries Cooperate, advocates for using the term treated water to encourage seafood consumption. They don't show you any pictures. How come? There's a picture. Why don't she show you that picture and tell you what's on each tritium? The head of the Federal Fisheries Cooperative argued the term contaminated water generated negative public reaction despite the fact that the water undergoes scientifically proven treatment process. It's not scientifically proven. Nobody's ever been allowed to inspect it. It doesn't exist anywhere else. No one's allowed to have independent samples in 12 years. The International Atomic Energy Agency doesn't take its own samples. They take the samples that uh, TEPCO gave to them. In 12 years, they've been to the site five times at Fukushima, and all five times have been in 2023. What does that tell you? How come they haven't been there for 12 years? Water is being discharged, not contaminated water, but contaminated water that has been treated according to scientific standards. There is no scientific consensus. There is no scientific standards that can filter this. That doesn't exist. That's the problem. That's why everybody's struggling to find a repository worldwide. It's so dishonest, it blows my mind until you appreciate the fact that your universities, and I mean all of them, and your media, and I mean all of them, are selling you that same story. In other words, they're completely compromised permanently. You have to be an idiot to trust him after you get this far in the video. If you, if you think that it's okay to hide multiple nuclear meltdowns and pretend nothing got out, you need to reevaluate your entire life. He also suggested it would be more scientifically accurate to refer to it as contaminated water is undergone their treatment through the Customs Purification System, ELPS. And I just showed you earlier, the Alps didn't work in 2014. The Riva didn't work in 2014. And he said it was endorsed by the International Atomic Energy Agency. They didn't endorse it. They didn't endorse it. They didn't approve it or, or pro, uh, they didn't approve of it or disapprove of it. They didn't test it on their own. They can't approve it if they don't even test it. And they're not the authorities, and neither is he. They're, the, they're, they're your worst enemy. They're a nightmare for humanity. They're destroying the fabric of life, the soup of life, the elements of society. So, go back up here a bit. Science outweighs irrational reasoning. This was a South Korean professor of nuclear and quantum engineering. Nuclear and quantum engineering. Nuclear and quantum engineering. He says the discharge is like throwing three grams. This guy says the nuclear meltdowns these buildings was equal to throwing three grams, three grams of sugar into the ocean, and that only two point two grams of tritium got out, but it's in a, in the thousand tanks. The buildings don't exist. These these are lethal doses. You can't you can't get in. This is official picture of BBC claiming they're 110 feet above the stump that should have been finished tearing down. There's nothing there. That's completely gone, so is Reactor 3. Reactor 1 and 2 have gone into China syndromes. So they burnt the hole straight down into the earth. But Reactor 1, 2, and, or 3, and 4 are actually gone. Right? They put a Kevlar sarcophagus. Now, it lost a fuel pool at the top of the building with Decades of reactor cores and two fuel pools, but the reactor appears to have gone down into the earth. Hmm. 
they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, but they say it's like three grams of sugar. This is a, a nuclear engineer, quantum and nuclear engineer saying that narrative. Uh, some sources are claiming 60 million one-ton bags. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So and I say 30 million, he says 60 million. So if you take one of these bags and put them in the back of a one-ton pickup truck, and bumper to bumper one-ton pickup trucks, because that's all they can hold is one of those bags, that's five rows of traffic right around the entire planet. If you take their narrative at 60 million, that's 10 rows of one-ton pickup trucks, bumper to bumper, wrapped around the entire planet 10 times. I remember in 2019, there was 105,000 sites with saturated with one-ton bags, 105,000 of these sites. But in 2016, there was 150,000 of these sites. Okay, so last night's show, I apologize for last night's show. What happened last night was I had a corrupted, another corrupted hard drive, wrap your mind around that statement. And um, the video was actually an hour and 50 minutes long, but only an hour or 52 minutes of it would play. So I chopped it, then I redubbed the video last night. And uh, it, it took me quite a long time to figure out what had happened. You had done a, almost a two-hour show. You had transferred everything over to an exterior computer where you're going to crunch the video down to a platter size where you can upload it. Because you're talking, you know, uh, the file last night was 60-something gigabytes originally. When I went and redone it, it was 40 gigabytes. So you had to bring that down to a gigabyte so you can upload it on YouTube. Uh, it was nine hours by the time I got it uploaded. Uh, well, I think all together was around 12 hours to do, get up a 52-minute video last night to get the kinks out of it, get it to work. And I did. Okay, so this one is going to be a short video. I want to do a premiere at 10 p.m. like my regular time. So it's not going to be a whole show. But it will be on Sunday. Uh, I'm exhausted. Now, last night, there was a lot of stuff cut out because there was an hour missing off the back part of it. And we thank James Lucid, who donated $320 uh, uh, two days ago. And that, was, that never showed up last night. I put that in the video, but I want to remember to mention it again tonight so he knows I got it. And also how much that is a game changer, right, for an operation as big as mine that is struggling. And... That's to encourage other people to help out. And you can find the links in the very bottom of my descriptions to donate. So we picked up the hard drive today. Uh, we picked up some more equipment today. We dropped off. The actuator showed up for the truck. The truck uh, is still in the garage. They think that it not uh, the transfer case and the transmission is not married properly. But the mechanic who specializes in that won't be here till Monday. So my truck is still in the garage. <laughs> it's an it's unbelievable nightmare. And there's also a possibility the transmission could be damaged or the transfer case is a dud. And by proxy, that might have damaged the transmission. But, but uh, that narrative kind of changed today to they think it's probably going to be where they were brought together, right? And that the actuator uh, wasn't working also. So we have a brand new one showed up today. And I dropped that off for them, guys. We went into the city and picked up some equipment and the hard drive. And uh, not even this, none of this is possible without people support me. And now, unfortunately, is a terrible time, so we need even more support than ever. We can't live stream due to being attacked by the nuclear industry. Not because I'm banned by YouTube, not because I'm banned by rubble, but because I'm banned by the nuclear industry, not through a democratic process, but through deception and deceit and dishonesty, which is the only thing they're actually good at.
Okay, so I'm gonna go out and render. I'm gonna go out and render this video. And what I mean by that is gonna convert it to a smaller size. Then I'm gonna upload it to YouTube. I'm gonna set it as a premiere. And the only way you can watch the video is not through live stream anymore. You gotta go to my video section and click that to see the latest uploads. And I apologize, it's beyond, it's out of my control, right? I, I got no control over that. But uh, what they done was they set a fire underneath me to push back even harder, to speak even more loudly, and to not let them win, because we this is the only voice we got, unfortunately. And what I'm trying to do is just educate and inspire people to learn and learn, teach others and maybe speak out on their own. And I'll continue to do that. And I'll continue to do the research if we can ever get the truck working again. Uh, we will, I'm sure. But uh, I switched off tonight after this show until Sunday. So, because I didn't get a break this week. It's been a frantic, unbelievable frantic week. And But here we are. We got a show last night and another show tonight and hopefully we're back to normal at least the shows will show up at the regular time five days a week from here on out and then i can't change what they got done to me and so i have to adapt but a great night and a great weekend hugs for everybody don't forget there's links in the bottom of the description if you're able to donate it's an incredible difficult time and so it's important Great. Have a great night. We'll see everybody on Sunday. Take care, everyone.